All right, figure uh, now is probably a good time to uh, to start the education for uh, 2024. Before we get going, I just wanted to uh, to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules. Uh, welcome to 2024. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope uh, we all had a happy uh, and healthy holiday season. Uh, before we get going today uh, with Cody and Raleigh, I just wanted to uh, give everybody a snapshot on what we're going to be looking at over the next couple months here. Um, First and foremost, I want to thank everybody that uh, has taken a lot of time out of their schedules. I wanted to uh, certainly uh, mention uh, Monique and John Hobbins, uh, Kevin Sprecher, Mike Ballow, uh, Jonathan Gold, uh, Charlie Robson, Jack Druga. We've got ourselves uh, quite a bit of programming. So uh, if you just want to stick around with us, you're going to see uh, a lot of our uh, in the newsletter, we're going to have a lot of the uh, programming going forward. Uh, I'm sure you've seen all of January thus far through the uh, up until the PGA show. Uh, in the coming weeks, you'll see all of uh, February and March's programming. And uh, we've got quite a bit uh, ahead of us. So again, uh, thank everybody for your time. Special thank you to uh, both uh, Caitlin uh, and Emily for everything that you guys uh, have done in order to help us put all of this together. Um, as you can see in just a little bit, we've got something fun, uh, especially this time of the year with uh, with Cody and Raleigh. I uh, have some speed training things that I'm personally looking forward to as I uh, start to continuously hit the ball shorter, and that's even before this uh, equipment rollback. Um, but without further ado, uh, I'm going to turn this on over to uh, Cody and uh, Raleigh and gents uh, before we get going. Thank you both. Uh, I'm looking forward to this, and without further ado, I'm going to shut up. And uh, the stage is yours. I hope everybody enjoys. Thanks again for coming. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Cody Smith, first assistant at Old Oaks Country Club. Happy New Year uh, and welcome to Fit Club. Uh, Fit Club is located in Fairfield, uh, Connecticut. We're probably a stone's throw away from the Country Club of Fairfield. Um, what kind of makes me excited about today is I'm trying to connect dots uh, to local professionals that we have here in the Mets section. Uh, we always have a wonderful display of educators on our winter series of, um, you know, the things that John have done, uh, Sprecher, Monique, everyone has always had wonderful guests. Um, Raleigh, uh, not only is he here at Fit Club in Fairfield, Connecticut, but he's also local. You know, he grew up uh, playing in the area, uh, born and raised pretty much. Born and raised right around right. there, yeah. So um, real quick, Raleigh, he is the owner and head trainer here at Fit Club uh, and Boost. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to let you take over from here. Everyone, and it's a pleasure and thank you for having me. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give you guys a little tour of the facility that we work out of here. It's in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, it's 7,000 square feet. Um, we train a tremendous amount of golfers here, pros, a lot of juniors, um, all sorts of abilities, all ages, everything from top to bottom. Um, this is our main turf area. We work with a lot of equipment. Come on. I'm getting yelled at already. Getting yelled at already. So we work with a lot of different equipment that involves eccentrically loaded, concentrically loaded, and that means loaded from both different ways as far as it's only loaded from the top of the swing down, it's loaded from bringing the top of the swing up and down. It's also loaded with different ways to manipulate that. So we have machines that make it. So if you're trying to create speed and work with a lot of speed, we can take machines and create a lot of speed, right? We can adjust those speed movements depending on age, ability, and what you wanna do. We then have a full 1,500 square foot gym in here, which has other machines. Come on. Yeah, we're coming. That have digital readouts where one of the most important things for speed is being able to create downforce, right? So we look at someone like Kyle Berkshire, where we're looking at left leg extension and how he flips back, where we can really see how much downforce they're creating. And then other machines that have rotational forces as well. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with this. This is a Kaiser machine, it works off the PSI, and you can work with people going rotationally with their speed as well. Let's go back and go. Yeah, gotta talk a little louder. What's up? Talk a little louder. So Raleigh, as we're walking back into kind of your private studio here, 
you know, every golfer is so different. You get, you know, juniors, you get, you know, 65 year old individuals, you get uh, young, handsome individuals like Nick Yon. Um, how, how do you start that process? Cause everyone's needs are obviously a bit different. Um, talk us through like your initial assessments. So I think the majority of people who are on this call right now have done a TPI assessment. And when you do a TPI assessment, it goes through most of the mobilities of, you know, what the player needs. Now, when we're doing this, if we're looking at everything, we're kind of working from the ground up. And when I say the ground up, we're working with ankles first, obviously. So if we're working with somebody like Jordan Spieth, right? Jordan Spieth, when he turns, he has a huge left side bend in his knee. So with this, we need to make sure that the player has a huge bend in his left knee. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So when we're doing that, if the player, let me show this in the back. Can't get his knee to push against the wall to a certain amount, a certain degree, five inches from the wall, then we're failing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the initial assessments you like to do, as you were mentioning, is from the ground up. So looking at ankle mobility and then working your way up to, you know, the knee, the hip. 100%. Now, the biggest thing that I see is the inability for internal rotation on people's hips. Now, the way we fix that, the easiest way is a five inch ball. And we're going to put that on the glute med, which is right here. Okay. So the glute med is located right on the top side of the butt right here. And we're just gonna sit here and go on here, okay? So, Code, I want you to come here on the underground. Mm -hmm. And how are you determining like the people that need to do this exercise? I'm gonna show you right now. All right. What do you want me to do? Lay it back on. Lay on the back, all right. Okay, bring your knees up. Okay, so the amount of separation that we're gonna see, put your knees together that we see right there, we want around 60 degrees of separation, okay? If we're going somewhere around here to about here, we wanna to try to get more. So what I'm gonna show you is one leg, it's gonna take about one minute. I want you to lay this ball on your left side, move these real quick. Turn over, that way. Put on your left side. I mean, what's that like this? Go ahead. How much? Turn, 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 turn. 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 Yeah, you got your left side, but right leg is straight. Left leg is straight. John? Is there more? Can you move the spot a little bit better? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, sort of down here. Oh, what? Sort of down here. Yeah. You sit right in on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got to explain that to them. Oh, once you're done. So the glute med controls internal rotation on the hips at all times. So if we can't rotate here, can't turn backside, can't turn front side, then we're not gonna be successful either way. Next step up would be the T-spine. We'll go over that next. But I want you to rotate more over. Rotate, 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 rotate. Rotate on this right here. Rotate the chest over here. Right, you're gonna fill that up there. You're doing it right there? Mm -hmm. Well, tell, tell them how, how much is it right there? Not much. Okay, so I want you to find a spot that feels like a seven or eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. That's why I'm doing this. Like, and I like to also do this. Oh, it's up here. Okay, so. He's about 30, no, stay there, don't, okay. don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. He's about 30 seconds in, right? So if we're on the glute side meet right there, we're gonna find a spot that's about a seven or eight pain. Six to, six to eight, we'll say, okay? So once we feel that, we know that we've, we've gotten in that spot, we're gonna stay there for about a minute. Then after that, we're gonna stay there for about another minute. Afterwards, we're gonna move about an inch. What we're looking for then is for those knees, when they're collapsed together and those feet are coming out, they're gonna move, one side's gonna move more than the other. And that's going to show us that we've achieved what we wanted to. So he's going to keep going. That other 30 seconds. Okay. 
and now move that about an inch in one direction and find the same amount of pain. So as I'm doing this, how is this gonna help this left side, which for me is a right-handed golfer, you know, that that's my lean side. Is this opening up? What would it be? External rotation, internal, all so, of it? So if we're here and we're going to our backside and we're trying to turn and we're getting to that backside rotation, most players are trying to get really into their backside right there, right? Now you got certain players, obviously like Brooks, who doesn't get into his backside. You got certain players like Scott Stallings. They don't get into their backside that much. But what we're, we're really trying to do is always optimize, especially in juniors, how to get on their backside as much as possible. So if they can get there and we can actually accelerate that, the better off they are is getting from here, obviously, down and slotting that club properly. Okay. Now, if we do that again, come to the other side and go to your other glute. Yep, standing back spot. Yep. So this is now obviously we're here. We've achieved a good turn. Can you guys see me? Okay, so we've achieved a good turn, let's say here, right? And we're coming down and we've slotted the, the ball right here. Okay. So for us to turn, there's no internal rotation on this side. So then Right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna flick, we're gonna use our hands. It's gonna get sloppy. Let's go, let's go back to the turf for a second. All right. I'll drop there on the turf. Yeah. Okay. Sorry guys, please excuse us. We're gonna jump around in his gym. As he mentioned, he's got 7,000 square feet here. So we're gonna try to use some of the different areas. All right, Riley, here we go. So, where's this one? Cody, I'm gonna use your example. Come on, whatever. Yep. You can use all yeah, you're good. You can use whatever. Okay. So, Cody, go to the back side of your phone. All right. Okay. So, if we're at the top side of our swing right there, yeah. the goal for Cody, right, would be for him to get a little bit more rotation right here so then he can get a little bit higher here. So, now that I've done that little bit of extra rotation, the next step up would be moving on his T spine. Okay. So, if we're also doing that and we've just loosened up both of his glute knees, we're now looking at his downswing. Okay. So, Slotted, we go down there, come towards me, bring the club towards me right here. If he can't get the internal rotation on this side working properly, right. he's gonna flick at this, and why is that? It's gonna be spine is tight also. Okay, so then the next step working on this, we can go from the glute lead, we go to his T-spine. So the reason I brought him out here is because I want you guys to be able to see him laying on the ground right here. So lay on the ground for me. You're gonna lay on your side directly. Left side. Doesn't matter. Okay. So we're going to do both. All right. Arms up directly towards me. Leg straight. Bend this knee. Bring it over here. So a big part of your focus is when working from the ground up, once you've assessed there's decent ankle, ankle mobility, you're kind of trying to get into the hips right away. So we're going ankles. I don't worry about knees that much because knee mobility, right? Internal rotation is not really, that's not really a thing. We have knee bars, but that's not really a thing. We're going from ankles, we're going to go to hips after that T-spine, and then we're working the shoulders. With wrist mobility, I want to work on it, but unless we're really getting, you know, dinner trade up and we're really getting nice and flat here with that backside wrist, I really don't worry about that too much because typically the external rotation on that shoulder is going to mean everything as far as shallow and that club out and sliding it right there. So the next step after going to the glute knee is really going to be getting his T-spine to this note. His T-spine has been notoriously tight, so I'm going to show you guys a simple stretch right here. This is called opening the book. The goal is to keep this going, this knee down, and then have both of his shoulder blades hit the ground. Now, right now, he can't do that. So what he's going to do is dynamically stretch. He's going to close it. He's going to open it. Slowing down just a little bit. And we're going to give that 45 seconds to a minute. Okay, so ranges of mobility. He's he kept going. 
He's now somewhere around, I'm going to say about an inch from getting his right shoulder blade down. If you have somebody that gets all the way to the ground with their shoulder blades that did not start like that, that is fantastic. But we're looking for improvement. Now, with this as well, if you want to go into your locker room and do this before round, this is the easiest stretch you can do to get your spine loaded up and ready to go to take those forces off of your truck. Cool. Other side right there. And as Raleigh said, uh, for me as the golf pro uh, and looking into my own game, you know, my back, like you hear so commonly, is, is definitely one of the things that always seems to be sore. You know, I went on a, on a golf trip recently with Nick Yon uh, and Nick Maselli. We were down in Florida. We played 36 holes a day. I mean, one of the biggest pains I think I had uh, post that trip was, you know, the ankle, the hip, and the T-spine. And I think a lot of... Um, what keeps me mobile throughout the summer is, you know, my assessments I do with Raleigh, uh, doing the exercises like this one uh, in particular to keep me active uh, throughout the season and into the winter as we try to, you know, this winter, we're going to try to continue to increase uh, that mobility in my T-spine. So with, with somebody like Cody, okay, let's, let's talk about his actual swing, right? So Cody does not have a lot of knee flexion when he swings. One of the things we're working on is actually trying to get him more athletic and actually bending in his knees a little bit more when he's loading into his backswing and actually coming down into his downswing. He stays very upright. So he's here. There's not a lot of load. And then not a lot coming up off of his lead side extension with his left leg. So he's put a lot of stress on his spine. From there, he gets a lot of spine pain. So we have to take that. But we're going to do this for like another 15, 20 seconds. See how much more rotation we got. Right now, he's got about another inch to go, so I'm gonna give him another 15, 20 seconds, see if we get any more improvement. Typically, if you don't see improvement in any of those joints, whether it's the glute, the T-spine, or anything, we're gonna have to use some static stretching or some glute work as far as fascia balls, which I'm gonna break out here in a second, like a lacrosse ball, and I can show you how to use those. What do we got here? We got, we got, we got an extra inch? We got an extra inch or no? No. Okay, so hop on, jump up. And again, we're kind of assuming a little bit right now. Again, most of us in the MET section have done some form of TPI training or maybe a different company out there where you've learned some screening and a way to assess yourself uh, or maybe even a student on the range. Um, so we're kind of jumping into this stuff quickly. Like we're already having me on the ground and doing some exercises because we've already gone through assessments with me. I've known Raleigh for two, three years. We know I have uh, kind of a struggling T-spine mobility. Um, so if we're moving quickly, again, there's a little bit of, well, you know, I, we're I think, understanding I that most the, of you are, or have seen uh, TPI if you've not been through TPI. I think it's a TPI assessment, touch your toes, that's great. I think everyone in the room knows that if you've got, you know, S posture, it's hard to rotate. So a coach of your caliber, obviously, we can fix that. But there's certain things that we see that are just harder to fix than others. And typically that's internal rotation on the hips, moving the spine into the swing, getting some thoracic extension into that. And then the next thing is gonna be shoulder mobility, right? So I'm gonna have Cody stand right here so he can see you guys. Okay. Now, Cody, show me you got this right now, baby. Let's go, right here. And then I wanna see him not move his shoulder, not move his elbow, but just move his hand backwards. So do you see, yep, do it again, keep repeating it. We'll go backwards, backwards, backwards. So right there, he's got about five to 10 degrees. We're pretty happy with that. What does that mean? That he can now take this, bring this back. And as he's bringing that trail side arm down, he can actually help shallow at the club. If we see people that can't do that, it's going to be harder. So you're going to have risk manipulations again. Someone like Brooks Kepka, someone like Hale Irwin, somebody who's been doing this where they have to, excuse me one second, I'm sorry. Man. Come to the top of the swing, really manipulate to get that club Daniel Berger, let's say, even though you know how laid off he is, to get that to come get slotted up because they don't have those mobilities. Okay, That's pretty simple right there as far as that goes. If you want to improve those mobilities, I'm going to show you a couple more things. Hold on one second. Okay. Rob is just going to go grab something. But again, essentially what he's looking at from his fitness side is just we've had many conversations about, you know, the manipulations that, he's seen some of his students that are golfers and 
some of the students we've worked on together, 100%. the manipulations that they're making because of a shoulder, you know, like the drill I just did, assessing that ability to make the arm go up and down, um, you know. So I want you to go back to that test in a second. Okay. Show them that shoulder test one more time. Yep. Okay. Excellent rotation on that shoulder. Mm -hmm. Lacrosse ball. Man's best friend right here. This should be in every person's golf bag. For the most part, this and some sort of TheraBand to warm up. I want you to lay on the ground and I'm going to show them what to do. So you're going to lay on the ground. All right. I got you. I'm going to tell you. You're going to put this right at the insertion point of your lap right here. And you're going to lay it right on. Where is it? Where do you want to see it? Right there. I'm going to show it in a second. Okay. Lay right on. Where? So that point is going to be right here, okay? So the lat inserts and exits right here on the lower base of your spine and right here. And that's gonna help control some external rotation. So I want you to lay on it and don't move. Don't roll it up. Did you find a spot that feels like it hurts like your glute? If not, there. roll over, tilt your body over a little bit towards me. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you're gonna lay on your side. So always leaning towards so the wall yeah. is what can help you get that knowledge track. Extend your arm out. Mm -hmm. You're going to roll over a little bit more mm -hmm. and find a spot where you're like, got it? Mm -hmm. So he's now got this on his lap. There you go. And he's going to sit there for 30 seconds to a minute. And guys, listen, we're not going through degrees of, you know, rotation on the shoulder. We're not going through degrees of internal rotation. I'm not going to measure everything for you guys. These are just basic tips that you can use when you're working with your players just to get them loosened up, stretched out, help, helping them develop more speed. This goes for juniors. This goes for every age. At certain ages, it's going to become much more difficult to, to work with um, certain mo mobilities and certain joints. Obviously, if you have somebody who's had surgeries on them, you're going to have to compensate in certain manners. But... Basically, the three areas that you really want to look at are ankles, hips, shoulders, the ankle, the two ball and socket joints. Mm -hmm. All right, hop back up one second. Okay. All right, show Again, them that. These are like some of the core things you've always done with me because of previous assessments. Correct. And, you know, failed T spines. Uh, show, you know, I used to have a crazy limitation on the trail shoulder. Um, and so these are just some of the things I do like pre-round or even sometimes post-round. So what I want you to do is show them how you just went from here to somewhere around here now Yep. on camera, just so they get an idea. Like that. Yep. And the same test we just did. Cool. And then bring it up, 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 up right there. Cool. Let's take the club. Top of the backswing. We'll slowly come down. Okay, now she now has the ability to keep this where it needs to be. If that's what his goals are for his swing. Also, if he's warming up for a tournament, that's where he needs to be. So now he's all mobilized and ready to go. The next thing we're going to talk about is activation. So I'm going to follow you. Oh, you're good. Okay. And I very much so prior to this drill from a golf, you know, connecting the dots with what he does and what I've seen in the golf swing, specifically my own is I very much so was a golfer that kind of came this way. That club was always quite a bit outside my hands, you know, get a lot, as you all know, you guys are all really great instructors yourselves, you know, a lot of toe hits, a lot of swipey hits, a lot of pass to the left uh, on the launch monitors, you know, I'm now starting to see in my own game that that club is falling down just a little bit more behind the hands in line. You know, I used to swing five left. I'm now maybe like two and a half left, two left. So my path has gotten better. My contact has gotten better. And then we're going to get into this, which is what do we all want? Speed. Speed. Yeah. So speed is my forte with everything. Um, Tiger, what has he said over the years? Numerous times, activate your glutes, activate your glutes. There are a million ways to activate your glutes. There's the easiest when you get to the golf course and it's just grabbing one of these. So I'm gonna have Cody put these around his ankle in a second. 
start me out with a heavy one here. Yeah, I'm gonna actually do that. Oh, it might fall over. So this doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't. You see a lot of people who'll do this for forever, but you know, let's get him in view here. And he's gonna take five iron to driver choppy steps. What I mean by that is right now he's in about a five iron width. He's gonna give driver steps now. So in a parking lot, because nobody wants to warm up in a in a in a driving range and showing this stuff, you can go back and forth nice and easy like this. And what he's saying, five iron uh driver. You you taught me this the first time I came in. Like I was the classic. You know, I'd come like this. Now, like I was doing this. Well, like right now, my feet are so close together. The band's not even working. My hips aren't being activated. And you're not keeping any anything. tension on your muscles. Yeah, I feel no tension on the muscles. So that's why that little tidbit of five iron to driver, back to five iron, you know, as Raleigh has taught me, it's keeping the glutes and the muscles all activated as I'm doing this. So, so again, avoid that. When avoid you're doing this as well, tight. if you are too bent over, you're going to feel this more in your quads as well. So when you are upright and you're more in this posture, it's a natural place for your glutes and your hamstrings to start activating. The more knee bend you have, the more quad activation you have. So we don't want to bend our knees when we're doing this too much. We want to be in an actual golf posture. Yeah. By the way, does anybody have iron or six iron, Raleigh, would you say? Yeah, somewhere around there. Typically, everything's in five iron or six iron. Um, does anyone have any questions for me so far? And we don't see anything on our screen. Nick Yon, if you see any questions or have a question, please uh, shout out. You guys got it. Um, Raleigh, just a quick question for you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Is is there a tipping point that you have uh, with people that you work with that if they just aren't able to create a motion, is there is there like a pivot point where you try something a little bit different as opposed to just trying to create more range of motion? Um, I would say that everything is based off of soft tissue work to start. So if if you get soft tissue work done, it doesn't create any more mobilities in the joints that we're working at. Um, then I send you to the medical team, right? So everyone knows in the TPI world that you've got your medical team, your fitness team, and, and your your uh, swing coaches. So I have some guys that I work with. Well, they use radiosonic waves. They use all sorts of things that are kind of cutting edge technology that will really bring you to a point where maybe you get an extra three degrees, maybe you get an extra five degrees. But for somebody who, who can't, I had a client who literally could not rotate at all, could barely turn. He had separated both of his shoulders numerous times. So this is as far as he got. So all we try to do is really just break up scar tissue. But typically 95% of the time, soft tissue work is the way to go. And maybe to parlay on his question there, like is there sometimes a lack of range of motion or ability just because there's no muscle in the area too i mean like you do the soft tissue work do you sometimes just assess like hey they just need to have stronger shoulders well, and here's where we get into juniors so when we start talking about juniors typically the juniors that i see that come in here we will get a club of speed out of them at least within the first four to six months with just getting them to understand the basic fundamentals of squatting lunging pressing pushing rotating, jumping, and carrying. So if you don't have those fundamentals as far as being able to perform a nice, solid, stable lunge, a solid squat with good rotation on the hips, a good push up, those things, then you're really gonna be you know, giving yourself a disservice as far as speed comes. So the first thing is when we train golfers, we train them like athletes. We don't just train them like an actual golfer because golf training has become a very band oriented sport. You want to get a good foundation of strength under a person before you really start working with them as far as like full on golf training. Hopefully that uh, answered your question there, uh, Nick, but uh, thank you very much for that. All right. So we just did the band around my ankles. Where, where do you want to lead us next? Next, I want to lead you to, we're just going to upper back, warm it up. So band pull aparts. Not only is this going to help you warm up your upper back, it's also going to help you give you some shoulder mobility. So it's called the TheraBand. I'll have you do it this second. Okay, great. Just so I can show you. And this is a and these bands are things you, people can find on Amazon or very your easy. your local Target or whatever. Very app. Very very easy. All right, great. So give me like twenty of this. Great. Okay. So you get the idea of that, okay? Pretty simple. 
Next major step is stability, right? We need stability in our joints, right? Especially in our hips. If we're going on our backside rotation, we don't want to feel unstable there. We don't want to feel unstable on our front side. So simple drill, club in the ground, single leg RDL. On the front, it's going to look like this. From the back, it's going to look like this. The goal is to get the glute primed and ready to go and the hamstring primed and ready to go. Again, when we're using the band, that does not involve any stability at all. So we really want to make sure we warm up all of those stability muscles. You can also get more advanced with it. If you've ever seen someone do this, where they're single leg and they start to turn back and forth, you're really getting your stability muscle. Second, core hips, okay? Squats, everyone knows how to do a squat. If you cannot do this, then go see a trainer because we really want to get you in this position right here, even in a fundamentally basic position right here. Do 20 squats. Simple as that. Next, if you know how to do a plank, I'm not sure you're going to do a plank on a range, but if you could do a plank in the clubhouse, that is great. Okay, planks, big. So do me a favor, get down, give me a plank real quick. I'm going to grab a sip of water. Hold on a second. All right. Nick, are there any other questions again? Or if you had any? On my end, uh, pretty darn good. Uh, I don't have any off the top of my head. All right. And, so and again, we have one in the chat. Yeah. Um, they they asked, how would you plan how would your plan change if you are working with a client who has hypermobility? They see it a lot in the junior girls that they work with. So I train the whole entire GFA girls team and they are all hypermobile and the focus is stability with everything. So strength creates stability. Real but, quick, who's the GFA though? They may not know who that is. Uh GFA is Greens Farms Academy girls. They're located in Westport, yeah, right Westport. on the border. I have girls that can literally go take this and put it all the way over their head and get it all the way to touch the blood. It's disgusting how they do it. I really, <laughs> so you you have girls that their arms can go essentially with their hands on the club, like all the way back and around and down that way. Yeah. So the way you combat that is immediately you start working on strength training and stability training. Um, if you don't, we actually see injuries, a lot of injuries, because they come up to the top, let's say. I've got a girl who swings at 99 miles an hour. One of my girls, she comes through, she swings this joint, not stable, not mobile, not strong enough, comes out. She had to get surgery after swinging hundred and we got her up to 109 without a proper warm up. Um, so you have to make sure that if you have a junior and she's hypermobile, that they get stabilized and strength first. Do we have any other questions in the chat? No speed. Okay. All right. So first, let me let me backtrack a second. Juniors, with juniors, it is all about the fundamentals of the strength components, whether it's squat, lunge, hinge, push, pull, all of those things. When we start training juniors like golfers, we are doing a disservice to them because then they start doing exercises that are too advanced for them, and they're not helping them. So, if you're doing certain ball exercises, just stay away from it. Teach them how to squat first. Teach them how to lunge first. Teach them how to do a proper push-up, whether it's elevated. Teach them how to do any sort of pulling, all of that stuff. So first. without a, even a proper assessment, like sending your junior golfer, you know, a, a clickbait thing on Instagram of, you know, a hot fitness instructor or whoever, somebody doing kind of an advanced thing with a dumbbell is actually a disservice. Disservice to them. So there's a famous man named Mike Boyle from Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning, and he's one of the godfathers of all strength and conditioning. The first year of training, for the most part, you have some outliers, I'll say that. Um, you do fundamental training. Now, I don't wanna make training not fun. When you're a golf coach like you guys are, you wanna make golf fun still. So I don't wanna have them doing just basic strength training. We'll mix in some ball exercises, we'll mix in some speed exercises. I'll get some metrics as far as how fast the rotational speed is, but the basis is learning how to do all those fundamental things and then still have them have fun. Now, outliers, I have some kids that will come in here and they're already swinging, you know, 104 miles an hour club head speed and they're in seventh and eighth grade. If you've got kids like that, their needs are going to be much different than most kids needs. They still need fundamental strength, but what they most likely need is a, the ability to harness themselves. And we do that with a lot of field work, right? So I work with a lot of coaches and a lot of kids are like, they swing out of their shoes completely. And when they swing out of their shoes completely, they're actually 
again, like we talked about the hypermobility possibly injuring themselves. So we don't want to do that, right? Is that because they're, they're able to sometimes swing faster than what their muscle can support? 100%. So, um, if, we're, so if I'm sitting on the range, you know, I'd every, say maybe the last year. By the way, every man's dream right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> if I'm, imagine being able to swing, yeah. You know, so sometimes if I have like a junior clinic and I have like 10 juniors, maybe telling every single one of them, hey, let's swing as fast as you possibly can. Look, there's a lot of benefit to that. And I think part of that is what we do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to learn how to swing faster by just swinging faster. But like, you have to be careful with probably a couple of the juniors, because if they're actually getting to a point where they're swinging so much faster than what their muscles can maybe stabilize, is that like a correct? Not point? only that, but you're creating a level of fatigue. So, you know, a lot of, you'll, you'll see um, swing coaches out there or, or, you know, I think I saw Bryson say this, the last 10 to 15 swings of your range session should be as fast as you possibly can. Well, I know juniors who go out and beat balls for three hours straight. They're fatigued to no end. And then the last 10 swings are as hard as they can. That's not a good way to approach that. I can create speed or any good golf fitness instructor can create speed without needing to do that. Yes, what we are doing is we are developing type two muscle fibers in the body to do that, right? But at what cost? So we don't want to go there and have, have a junior start doing that. And then every day, because juniors, I don't know how many juniors you have, but they go out and they hit balls after school every day. So every day they're stretching certain muscles. And we were talked about the hypermobilization of certain muscles. We don't want them to do that. What we want them doing is being able to properly set their shoulders, their shoulder blades and perform a deadlift. We want them to be able to do an overhead carry. We want them to be able to do certain things mm -hmm. where those muscles are now being more cultivated to perform the task at hand, which is what we know is swing really hard. Um, does anyone have questions about juniors besides that? Because, you know, juniors is a big thing these days. A lot of people work with juniors and it, and it's a lot of, let's just get them to swing as hard as possible. Now I get as coaches, you know, we want that, but. Just nope. we're looking at the chat there. All right, let's, let's, uh, I'm gonna get a long club a second. All right. And again, everyone, this is why we kind of wanted to label this the live workout. We wanted to, I kind of wanted not only just to kind of introduce you all to Raleigh and to Fit Club. Um, hopefully, I'm introducing you to somebody that can be a part of your team, uh, whether it's for your own game. Maybe you have somebody that you want to partner with. I know you and I have had a student, Crystal, that we've done some work together with in the past uh, as swing instructor and then me after every lesson. Uh, reaching out to you and saying, hey, this is what I'm seeing uh, in the golf swing and the needs I want. And then he was, you know, doing what he believes in, in the fitness side of things. But then, you know, you were implementing, as you said, to keep it exciting, to keep things not boring with just basic movements. You were trying to input a little bit into like her, for example, some of the things I was seeing on the golf side. hundred percent. And, and, you know, the, the job of the fitness coach isn't necessarily to just create strength and create speed. It's actually, in my opinion, to, to be more in coercion with the swing coach to get the the, the kid in the position or the the, the, the person that we're working with, the student in the position that the coach wants them into. So, you know, we can get them stronger. Obviously we can get them more speed, but at some point it has to be getting them, getting them on plane. And if we're doing something that's not gonna benefit that, then we're really doing a disservice to them. Um, the whole goal is really not just speed, but scoring, obviously. So if we're trying to get them, you know, into a place where we want them to be versus what their coach wants them to be, then what are we really doing? Um, I work with probably 12 major coaches in the area. After every lesson we talk, um, after every, not every lesson, but every fitness session we talk, we send videos. There's a bunch of you on here that are watching this that I work with your clients. Um, it, it's a really, it's a two-pronged approach that really needs to be um, that way. Otherwise, then we're kind of just working out and we're not training. And there's a big difference between working out and training. Um, I think you said to me when I first met Raleigh three years ago, like one of the things you mentioned was like, hey, I'm a I'm a fitness coach, right? Yeah. I'm not a golf coach, right? So unless there's that communication, um, whether about what I'm doing in my own game or what I'm doing uh, with one of my students that's also one of your students, mm -hmm. you know, he's going to continue to just go based off of his assessments and improve basic 
movement, which is still really good and still part of the foundation of it. But if you want your student to get whatever, as uh, we did, ex more like external rotation. Trying to get like, you more athletic as far as using your legs more. So, you know, this is actually perfectly feeding into our next thing okay. as far as speed. So one of the things that Cody came at me with was, I want more speed this year. Um, this was last summer, last winter. Yeah, yeah. Um, this the winter, winter she's too busy this winter. Um, <laughs> Just bought a house. Um, easy. So last winter, she wanted me to, to improve his speed. And the biggest thing besides his T-spine rotation is we saw that he just wasn't being athletic enough in his swing. And what I mean by that is he wasn't using the ground enough. Now, these things are great. Now, I don't believe that they add speed by using them constantly, but they do add speed in warm-ups. They do add speed when you're training with someone, but I'm just going to use this as a long stick right now so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So if I'm here... I know every single person on this channel has seen Kyle Berkshire go into his big old swing where he's got tons of thoracic extension, which means that we don't need to work on the mobility of his thoracic extension. We've seen his trail side rotation, which means we don't need to work on his trailer bar side rotation. We have seen him do this though, load as he's coming down and then jump off that backside, that front side leg, okay? That right there is the biggest indicator that I see of speed is the athlete's ability to create ground force. Um, the main tool that we use, whether this is juniors, adult people who can handle it on their spinal load, is the trap bar. The trap bar is the number one tool that we use, whether we use it for jumps, certain things, main lifts. The trap bar is by far the best tool. This is a great tool, but you have to move mass to create mass. When you create a little bit of mass, you're going to create a little bit more speed. Um, Speed is something that I think has been a little bit maligned in the, in the golf world. But if you look at all the major guys now who have created speed, you know, Victor Hovland has gotten strong as hell. If you go to um, John Rahm's TPI post about six months ago, he's flat bar deadlifting. Straight bar deadlifting in the old fitness days was considered to be obsolete. You just wouldn't do that. He's front squatting. He's back squatting. He's picking up heavy weights. He's moving heavy weights. He's throwing heavy balls. He's gotten himself to the point with, with his body that he's able to move those weights because obviously we're not going to start off that at the beginning, but he's moving himself in a way where he's creating a ton of ground force. Now, someone like, like John, he's here, maybe, hmm. what is he like here? Let's yeah. say, you know, yeah. he's here, right? He's rotating, but he's rotating and he's extending super hard with that front side that like this hip right here is extending so hard and this knee is extending so hard that he's developing so much ground force that over the years, if you look at stats, John's actually improved his um, his distance and his club head speed. Some will say it's equipment. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know if it's really necessarily all equipment because it hasn't changed that much. Um, you look at Fitzgerald, um, Fitzpatrick, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He gained 15 pounds. What do you get, right? 15 pounds, something yeah. like that. So you're kind of saying like, hey, there's working out, there's speed training, whether it's like super speed golf or the stack system. It's, it's the combination of both of them together, which is not only creating the most speed, but also then it's staying. 100%. It's not, this is- this While is maintaining your mobilities of your swing, because you will lift really heavy and you will get tight. So one of the things that you will see with Rory and you will see with certain, with certain guys, the reason that they can lift so heavy is because they swing every day. They do mobility work every day. They have physio teams that do soft tissue. For someone like me and the average golfer, we can't lift that heavy without having like some sort of spinal load and we're losing mobility. Now, if you look at me, I'm supposed to have really good mobility because I'm a golf coach. Fitness <laughs> guy. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm somewhere right around here. I could really, if I worked at it, get somewhere around here. I'm a 0.5 index, right? So we're here. That, that's not doing me any any justice right there. Now I can swing really hard, but if I'm losing my mobility and I start swinging and I start lifting extra heavy and squatting, you know, three, four, 500, whatever the hell it's gonna be, right? I'm gonna end up stopping somewhere around here. Don't have enough backside rotation, don't have enough turn. What happens? Every one of you have seen this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's what we see. and that's what we see when we've gone to, golf lounge or a local place uh, got on launch monitor and video view 
That's what we've always. And said. that's something I, I still struggle with because I lift heavy because I have to look a certain way for my job. But one thing we want to make sure is that when we're creating that ground force, we're creating that core rotational power, we're creating all those strengths that we're doing. When I'm talking about the fundamentals of creating strength is we cannot jeopardize our mobility at all. Mm-hmm. So with my athletes and, and, and my golfers that come in, we give them an assessment once every six to eight weeks. If not, I assess them as we're working before they warm up, whether it's a problem, problem area FD. And then someone, let's say Eric, who was gonna be here, we always check a couple things. Now I'm gonna move this over here. Again, does anyone have any questions while we're taking a quick little pause here? Sorry if I speak fast, by the way. So for me, lower quarter test. Everyone in this room, I think, knows this. Knees squeezed, feet squeezed, cross the chest. I'm going to fail this because yesterday I bench pressed 315 pounds. And that's as far as I got right there. And that is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. I see a question in the chat. What do we got? Are you guys able to see that? Nick? What do you got? Caitlin? Click a button. Chat. Yeah, we've got what assessments other than TPI are you using? Oh, awesome. Oh, okay. Great, great I can, question. I can go through a list here. So I'm going to, yeah. let me lay, lay on your back for me. But. Okay. Need a club or no club? No club. So this is kind of advanced level stuff. I'm going to go through my hip and shoulder assessment so you guys can kind of see this a second. In the- I want you to scoop back just a touch. Okay. I'm not going to be in the frame. He's going to be laying on his back. Okay, so kind of three major movers in your, in your hips. We've got, you know, our adductors, which are on the inside, our glute med on the outside, and then our hip flexors, which is consisted of your psoas, your iliopsoas, your iliacus, and those muscles of that sort. So simple. If I see somebody who's not able to drive off their right side for some reason, who's typically, let's say, like a Min Woo Lee, okay? So Min Woo Lee drives off his right side really hard. Um, that right, lot, right leg comes up quickly. I will do an assessment where he's going to pick his leg up right here. He's going to hold it, and then he's going to push up against this hand. So push up, push, 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 push. I'm pushing. Okay, rest. Okay. Now, I'm going to see the difference from that leg to this leg, okay? Now, there actually is about... What do you feel like a 20% distance, difference, 15? Yeah. So I'm gonna start activating muscles. Now for the same thing, glute knee. We're gonna push on the outside, push. Stop, other side, push. That was about even. Adductor, right? Now all these muscles are important in the swing. Whether you think so or not, they're very important in the swing. And you're not, you, and push. As, as, as the question was asked, like you didn't learn this from your time on TPI, you learned this through some of the other- No, I, I, I'll i be honest with you. I use only about half of TPI's assessment. Um, I use a lot of other assessment tools, which I'm gonna take you few, uh, through a few of them right now. I use a lot of physical therapy assessment tools. Um, just things that I've done over the years where I really find out what's going on with the with the athlete's body. Again, I don't train just golfers. I, I think golfers are athletes. I think it's kind of, you know, to kind of put them in a box is, is silly. Um, you know, you have an assessment for that athlete. I assess all my athletes the same, whether it's a golfer, um, a football player. I train a lot of lacrosse players. Now, what I do with that information is different than what I would do from a football player to a golfer, obviously, because the one thing, their goals are very different. So if a golfer has a certain goal, football player has a certain goal, I'm not going to really work on them the same way. Um, last test, though. Push in. Adductor test right here. That seems pretty good. Cool, adductor, that seems pretty good, okay? Now, next one. On your and feet. I know I'm making this look easy because I'm such a physical specimen. I mean, here. you are pretty jacked these days, you know, I'm not gonna lie. 160 pounds the other day on the scale. I was pretty proud of myself. What are you, 160 now? Just about. We need, we need, you, know, you know, 170, you get that three miles an hour of yeah, ball speed. 170, I hear you. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, get, you get that ball speed. We need, yeah. we need that. We Working need... on that, probably. Working on that. <laughs> hey, fellas, be quiet a little bit. I'm doing a presentation. Cool. Okay, so shoulder assessment. This is pretty simple. Rotator cuffs. We work on them a lot, okay? Um, You wanna make sure that this shoulder girdle is nice and mobile, as mobile as it can, but most importantly, healthy as possible, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's gonna put his arms out. 
he's then going to put him at 30 degrees, which is going to look something like this. Okay. And I'm going to just gently ask him to push up on this one. And then gently ask him to push up on this one. I'm going to say, do you feel any pain? Do you feel any difference in strength? Infraspinatus, external rotation. So if we take this muscle right here, you guys are good. You have to be that quiet. You guys are good. Sorry, oh, so this muscle right here, this muscle right here, okay, external rotation, external rotation, infraspinatus, okay? So we're just going to have to do this. I'm going to do both at the same time. He's going to face me real quick. Bada boom. He's going to push out. I'm going to feel the same. That feels pretty good. That was actually damn strong. I'm not going to lie. That was good. Dude. Let's go. Don't make me fall the guns. Okay. So now we're going to go inside. And we go great. Up here we go. Same thing. External. This is more relevant to the golf swing, obviously. Internal. There we go. The last test I do is always for labrums. Okay. I want to make sure that your labrum is, ha is happy. There's what's called the O'Brien test. It's pretty simple. Okay. So arms up. He's going to slightly face you just a little bit. Okay. So if his arms are straight, we're going to put this arm 13 degrees in. So go right there. We're going to turn it over. And then we're going to push up just gently on that. Feel any pain? No. How does that feel? Good. Feel strong though? Yeah. So those are some of the other main assessment tools that we use. You know, one of the other ones that TPI does use is, you know, spinal mobility as far as being able to touch your toes and, and things of that nature. And I, I would say from a golf professional and somebody I've gone through level one with the TPI, what I think I find noticeably different with you is testing kind of while sometimes doing things in motion. I mean, like he was just doing there, like holding, putting pressure on the back of my hand and I had to push out towards it or on my foot, like pushing my foot down. Um, it wasn't just kind of stand there and turn no. or stand there, bend over and touch, which are all great things, all part of the basic movement and, and great assessment tools for us to use. Um, but from your world, you know, 100%. You're, you're a little bit more dynamic in your test. And, and I try to be a little bit more detailed too, because I think sometimes, you know, there needs to be just a little bit more detailed, especially when you get to the older community. The older community, I like to test a lot of different things. And then also when we get to like, the professional community who's trying to get a little bit more speed. So I'm going to bring you guys over with me. So show them inside there. All right. Just show them a, a video. There's a bunch of tools in there that I use for assessment purposes. Give me one second. But I also, I don't think you guys can see me over here. Can you see that this has numbers on it? Yep. Okay. So if I pull on this machine, this has numbers on it. I get a baseline of every kid that comes in here on this machine on one basic test. And that is them stepping into their swing and driving it as hard as it can. Okay. I give them five opportunities to do it five times. And then I move on to a couple other of the ground force um, assessment tools. Now, and are you measuring both sides when you're doing that? I'm not actually. I'm measuring one side because every person is weaker on their backside. What we do is we always make sure we try to keep them balanced, but I'm not going to measure the trail side um, as far as like swing. If you're a righty, I'm not going to measure your lefty swing. I'm not worried about that. We're going to be working on that in the future. So if we're doing exercises, we'll be doing it on both sides. But for the sake of the assessment time, yeah. I don't want to sit there. and. So you're, you're stuff. mainly testing like their dominant the direction the person is swinging, but when you're working out, rotational tests. yeah, for yeah. like the rotational test itself, but like you're working out everything there. If we're doing that as a workout tool, and by the way, that's a common exercise right there that I do, you know, a lot with my, with my athletes is we'll do both sides. Now, yeah. if you watch me do this, I'm going to so, get two shots at it. Right. So my peak was 198 right there. Okay, so my peak power, my peak wattage, my average was 172. It shows mm -hmm. on the board. And how fast do you swing, um, by the way? Like 122 to 125 is my club head speed. Got somewhere it. around there. So you okay. can tell that those numbers are are pretty relevant to a fast swinger of the golf club. Now, if I do this on my left side, 169, 167. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm not warmed up. I just got a hernia probably. <laughs> now. So that was your showcase as an assessment. As an assessment tool. Now we have other tools that we use ground force for. The ground force is the most important thing. You guys are good to go, so I'm gonna, good to go. Um, 
ground force, so we can go back in there. So the biggest thing that I see as far as speed is the more ground force that you can create, and that means lead side, leg extension, the faster your swing is gonna be. Um, for the most part, and I'll make a caveat to that. There are some guys, right? So classic swing, we're up, trying to keep that right arm in front of our leg a little bit. We're not trying to, you know, Gordon Sargent it, right? Cause that's really hard to do, right? It's almost impossible. I'm trying to see how far you can get to here and then drive up, right? This isn't early extension here. This isn't loss of posture too early. We are here, we are coming down and we are driving up. So I want to be able to assess that. Does anybody have any other questions for me? And is what you were just talking about there, you want to be able to assess that. Is that part of some of the assessments we've already shown them? Or is there any assessments that you would maybe do, as you mentioned, to kind of be able to assess somebody's ability to be able to post up on that lead side? And well, I, I think the biggest thing besides that is testing someone's vert. Um, TPI. Their vertical? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna keep this door open. T TPI, you know, one of the things I say, everyone who's done their first set, their first uh, TPI one, is they say that the higher the vertical jump, the farther the swing. Now, I don't think Bryson has the highest vert on tour. I would bet he doesn't. I would say the most ground force that someone can create is a better way to explain that, mm -hmm. um, because. That's really what they're trying to say right there. You got another question, hold on. They can probably read it for us. If I were just reading the question. Any workout for a week and I want to see that. So I had a junior, this goes back five years, six years, seven years, somewhere around there. Um, she worked out three times a week. Her, driver distance went from 190 to 260 and that was three days a week for nine months i recommend two days a week at least and then another workout on your own that workout was consistent mostly of mobility and core workout my thoughts on cardio well my cardio is crap right now so i should be doing more of it a mm -hmm. um b if you've got a tournament player or a guy who's doing 36 holes or something like that then cardio i think it is really something that is beneficial. Um, I don't think it should be overdone. I think the workout should have enough stress on them where they're getting some cardio. But again, if you have a junior who's carrying their bag for four tournaments a, a week or four, four matches a week, they should have some good cardio. Also, we use cardio as a, a, a pressure putting tool around here. So I will put down a putting mat. I will put down my echo bike. I'll make them bang out three calories and then I'll make them hit five putts in a row. So if they can do that, that's a good way to simulate pressure. Mm -hmm. And then too, I guess jump probably roping. Like the... yeah. jump roping. Yes. Whoever asked jump roping, I do like jump roping. Um, jump roping is great. There's a thing called RSI, which is um, it's an index reactive strength. It's the ability to pop up and down, which is what jump roping is. The quicker those type two muscle fibers can activate, the better you are. So jump roping is a great warm up. It's actually a quick warm up. We don't do it that much here, but for people at home, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I would also like to bring up a lot of people. I think they see you in the winter time. Mm -hmm. They do, you know, the two or three days a week workout, and then they get to the season, right? And it's like all of a sudden they they almost like ghost you, right? You don't see them. They're like, oh, I'm working. I'm doing golf. Like I'm playing golf on Wednesday instead of seeing you, like, but then come July and August, sometimes they start to lose some of that speed, maybe some of that mobility. hundred percent. And when I say workouts, I don't mean an hour, 15 hour, 30 minute workout. You can get a lot done in 30 minutes. You can get a lot done in 45 minutes. If you can get two 30 minute workouts done on your own a week, um, that's great. If you can get an hour long workout with a trainer and another 30 or 45 minute workout with, with your trainer, that's, I mean, without your trainer, that's, that's fantastic as well. Um, in season training is something that's neglected in all sports. It's not just golf. There's rigors on every sport, obviously, you yeah. know, um, you're walking all these holes. 
especially with juniors, they leave school, they go play golf, they go play matches, they go home, they got three, four hours of homework because most golfers are trying to go to elite schools. Then the last thing you expect them to do is to come to your, your gym at 8.30 at night. Um, I've got two golfers, I would say, two or three golfers out of my stable of, you know, 12 to 20, whatever I have at the, at the moment, juniors that religiously will not skip workouts and they will come here as tired as as hell. Um, if you go look on my Instagram, one of them was here last night. He was here at 830 at night after he just got back from ski school, doing homework and doing everything. And he was deadlifting, doing some heavy deadlifting, you know, 245 pounds for um, a kid who's only been working out for, for six, seven months. So working out consistently is, is a huge thing. Well, and I would like to say, I think just from my own, uh, you're very welcome. Personal, Appreciate your time. Personal experience with you is like, Guys, when I met Raleigh three years ago, I mean, because of the ability to, to measure things, you know, I was a 103 to 105 club head speed guy, like on the course, you know, probably get to 106, 107 if I went after it. Mm -hmm. And then through our time through the years, I've been able to get to like 110 to 112 now, and then swinging out of my shoes, maybe touching like the 115 range. Mm -hmm. Which I've noticed to your point, what you were saying is like, if I don't keep up during the season, and I think this is important for everyone. To and, listen. and by the way, I want to make a point. He's not working out with me. He's doing tempo at home. Yeah. So I'm not saying that you have to come work out with a trainer and not doing that. He's just doing something. Yeah. Doing something is extremely important. Yeah. And, and I think what I was going to say was just like, I notice when I'm not doing something, I'm going to like 108. Yeah, 109 mm -hmm. with the ability to measure, you know, old oaks access to flight scope and, and a GC Hawk, you know, whereas when I'm working with you or when I'm doing at least something at home on my own, I notice the speed you've created for me stays. So I think that's a huge thing that doesn't get talked about enough, at least from my perspective as a golf instructor. People don't talk about the continuation of working out. They just think, oh, it's winter time. Let me, it's, it's the new year's it's January. I mean, if you're a gym owner right now, you're loving life. Your stock is through the roof for the next month or two, because mm -hmm. everyone's new year resolution is like, I want to work out. I want to swing the club faster. I want to get stronger, but it's maintaining it is really how you actually play better golf. And, and if you take a couple of weeks off, okay. Everyone sometimes has to take it. It happens. It'll come back quickly. As long as you just put the work in. Any other questions for me? Yep, I, I got one here. Uh, I see many golfers with tendonitis in their arm, elbows. Do you use grip strength assessment to find any value in it? Uh, no, typically that happens when when um, athletes start swinging too often um, without the proper preparation. So if I have a golfer who, um, let's say, hasn't really swung much all season, come to this, it comes to springtime and they're trying to get some, some rounds in or trying to beat some balls, um, that's typically when it happens. Um, it's like the same thing, you know, you see with tennis players, um, they'll go play tennis, um, after the summer's over in the winter, because it's the only thing to do. Um, what I see is, is soft tissue care and an appropriate, um, reworking into your sport. So if anyone's done anything, you know, major in their life, so let's say working out for one, if I went and I worked out and I did my max on my first day back after not working out for God knows how long, um, I'm going to be in a lot of pain and it's not going to feel good. And I might even injure myself. So for me personally, it's something where I have to work myself back into it. Um, we see a lot of growth plate injuries in football and baseball players because they haven't thrown a ball all winter or all summer, one or the other. Um, so it's something as far as working those muscles back into it and getting used to it and conditioning again, because again, strength and conditioning isn't just strength and conditioning as far as cardio, it's conditioning your muscles to do the operation that's needed. Mm -hmm. yeah no great answer there um this last question we have here uh looks like it's a little bit more specific to somebody that maybe has like a knee injury or a knee replacement mm -hmm. um is there any exercises somebody with knee replacement should do um that should do more of to build strength back or stay away from because of a re-injury and they were asking about uh, a knee replacement. Um, it's called a TKE, a terminal knee extension. 
Um, you can YouTube it. It's very simple. You put a band behind the person's knee and all they do is put that knee into extension and flexion. That'll start working on muscles right here, which is your vastus medialis, and then your shin, which is your tibialis, anterior tibialis. Those muscles stabilize your knee. And if they start doing those and some tibialis raises and, and you know work into it into a proper routine, they will be completely fine for the most part. I can't guarantee it because they're obviously they're not my client, but um, just some brief things like that, TKEs, tibia, tibialis uh, raises, uh, tibia torsions, things of that nature. Um, and are those things they can do like if they they can do it and assess, but like they don't need an assessment for that. They don't need to like get some kind of knee or ankle testing before that. That's like something, hey, if you have knee injury or had a knee replacement, yeah. this is like level one kind of PT. Well, yeah. What what I would say is if someone's had a knee replacement, they've gone through proper PT, hopefully. Um, once they've gone through proper PT. They've been cleared for sport. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to strengthen that muscle with those exercises. Um, another one would be just a wall sit to see how they feel doing that. Wall sits are very easy. You're supported by three points of contact. You've got your feet and your back. So it's very easy to do. Um, and then, you know, you've got some other. Yep. Yep. Um, if I can show this, you know, you can start working into I think people have heard of knees over toes by now. You know, that's something that's been around for a long time. The ability to have flexion in your knee and your ankle to go over your toe. People think back in the day that squatting, you should not have done that. It was a big faux pas back in the day. Actually, it's the opposite. You want to have the mobility to do that. Not only that, you want to have the mobility and the ability to sit in this position with your knees over your toes. Stay right there, okay? So you also, when you're squatting, want to be able to have your knees go over your toes. It is not something where it has to be like this. You want to have your center of gravity, right? And just basic squatting will help you. Mm -hmm. All right. What else yeah. you got? I think that was kind of the last question there. I think since it's uh, it's getting to be a 240, Raleigh has probably 40, 50 uh, yeah. football guys coming at Ooh. three o'clock. So... I didn't know unless there's another question there. Maybe we do a couple, just like something everyone can do at home to what, get a little bit of speed. Or what, what do you tell the client who wants more speed, but their motor patterns aren't good enough to support it? Work on their motor patterns. Um, when you say motor patterns, I'm I'm assuming you mean like their ability to do the basic exercises, like lunging, squatting, hinging, and and things of that nature. Um, if they are clumsy, then we're going to start working on body awareness. What I mean by body awareness is the ability to jump and land on one foot, jump back, land on one foot. Yeah. I got to tell you how many people come into the gym and they think they're athletes and they can't do something similar like that. So motor pattern wise, we call that body awareness around here. You should be able to do that. You should be able to do it backwards and forwards pretty easily and pretty stably. Mm -hmm. So you're saying essentially, I think my, uh, as I read that question, it's just kind of like, unfortunately, we're not all dealing with Rory's and DJ's and Tiger's what, of the world. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Un unfortunately, my uh, Mr. Smith at uh, Old Oaks uh, doesn't have that ability. So you're kind of just saying like, what they really need to do is what you just showcased. Yeah, they got to be able to handle some basic. Get, this, get an assessment, build some body awareness, build some strength. Once your strength is there, you'll already see some speed being built. Then once you're ready for speed work, we're getting to you know you can get into speed work, which is really just moving mass. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you know in some cases like it's Patrick eating more to move mass. But the first thing is really get an assessment, and then after that, work on body yeah. awareness. There, yeah. I, and I kind of hate to probably be like bear of bad news, but it's like, oh, unfortunately, I'm sometimes you have that person in front of you, like getting them to go from 80 mile per hour club head speed with a driver to 100 or even to 90 sometimes. 
it's it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, guys. I started off playing golf. I was 150 pounds. I weigh 188 pounds. My ball speed went from somewhere around like 90. Or club head speed went from 97. I'm, I'm I cruise around 120, 122 now. That's not because I worked so hard with the body I had. It's because I put a I put a bunch of muscle on, put a bunch of weight on, and I, and I worked at it. You know, it's something that's gonna have to come to it. Um, the, the thing with some people is the majority of people is at the beginning, they don't have to put a lot of work in to see a lot of results. You're going to see results quick. It's going to happen. What's going to happen is they're going to see those miles per hour start to dip. And that's when the real hefty work's going to have to come in and they're going to have to be in the gym, you know, two, three, four, five, six days a week. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Doesn't look like there's any more questions. Um, well, hey, I think this is a good point to uh, call it done cool. thank you very much of course again i think guys my goal was you know people like john hobbins and kevin sprecker and monique they they've done such a great job bringing great education uh to our section um sometimes local sometimes you know not local uh i think that's why i was excited about today um, this just happens to be you know, one of our uh, local examples. Not the greatest on camera. So sorry if it started off a little rough. I don't like being <laughs> the camera. Just that one, just <laughs> it's right. But no, it's, you know, Raleigh, well, your local talent within our Mets section, where we said it a bunch of times at the beginning, Fit Club. Uh, it's in Fairfield, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, I'm right here. Fairfield Country Club is, even I can hit a driver to the club from here. Let's go. It's, it's that close. Yep. Um, but uh, no. And it, listen, if you're somebody who's looking to get somebody some speed and they've never worked out, I literally guarantee a club of speed two months, as long as they're willing to put the work in. Um, it's not hard. It really isn't. It's just that pre the people have to be willing to put the work in to get it. No matter really any age, I got to be honest, even if they're old and you see their swing and they're really just slapping at the ball, a little mobility work, stuff they can take home with them, put a little extra work in They're They're really going to go a long way. Yeah. All right, uh, Nick or Caitlin, do you guys want to take over? Tony, I thought you guys were absolute aces. I uh, can't thank you guys enough. Um, I'm sure you're super busy right now. Uh, liked what you said earlier. 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> liked what you said a little bit earlier about having a, a local guy. So uh, I've received a couple text messages here from people uh, inquiring about uh, – Raleigh services. So uh, Raleigh if, uh, or Kayla, maybe we could put something together so that they can put themselves in contact with uh, with Fit Club. And if anyone yeah. wants to, to set up something where it's a more of a live seminar and I can do an event for people so it's live and they can really see this in person. So that way the Met people come on up here and see the facility some more. I'm more than happy to do an in-person seminar as well at any point. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Raleigh, Cody, uh, on behalf of all of us here, I can't thank you guys enough for taking time out of your busy schedules uh, and, and helping set 2024 off and running. So uh, you guys were, were fantastic. Can't thank you enough. And uh, this certainly isn't going to be the last time uh, we work alongside you guys. So thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. All right. See you guys Happy next week.